Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Genesis. My name is Jonathan Chan and I'm so glad that you can join me today as we explore chapter 24. But before we begin, let's start off with a video clip and we'll be right back. So, as it turns out, the green trash can is not recycling. It's for greens, like compost and eggshells. Mm. And the blue one is recycling. And the black one. Riley is acting so weird. Why is she acting so weird? What do you expect? All the islands are down. Joy would know what to do. That's it. Until she gets back, we just do what Joy would do. Great idea. Anger, fear, disgust. How are we supposed to be happy? Hey, Riley, I've got good news. I found a junior hockey league right here in San Francisco. And get this, tryouts are tomorrow after school. What luck, right? Hockey. Uh-oh, what do we do? Guys, uh, th 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 this, uh, here, you, you pretend to be Joy. Wouldn't it be great to be back out on the ice? Oh, yeah, that sounds fantastic. What was that? That wasn't anything like Joy. Uh, because I'm not Joy? Yeah, no kidding. Did you guys pick up on that? Uh-huh. Sure Ooh. did. Something's wrong. Should we ask her? Let's probe, but keep it subtle so she doesn't notice. So, how was the first day of school? She's probing us. I'm done. You pretend to be Joy. What? Okay. Um, hmm. It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Oh, very smooth. That was just like Joy. Something is definitely going on. She's never acted like this before. What should we do? We're going to find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. Ahem. Uh-oh, she's looking at us. Uh, what did she say? What? Oh, oh, uh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? <sighs> He's making that stupid face again. I could strangle him right now. Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Oh, oh, are you kidding me? Time. For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot? We are now on chapter 24 of Genesis. Have you ever met someone or worked with someone who is not on the same page as you? For example, at work when we have tasks and goals to achieve, we and our team members need to be on the same page. Or else, those tasks, those goals will never be achieved or severely delayed. If the entire team is not on the same page, there will be conflicts that would jeopardize not only the current task and goals, but also the entire organization. It's these kind of relationships, the kinds that exist where there are goals, tasks, missions, or visions to achieve. It's these relationships that, ha that having everyone on the same page is so crucial. Drinking buddy relationships, not so much so. They don't need everyone to be on the same page. You don't have to agree to cheer on the Canucks and say that's the only team to cheer for. Hence, working relationships are a great example of relationships that require everyone to be on the same page. That's why we were given the Tuckman ladder of team building. The forming, the storming, the norming, the performing, and the adjourning. Where being on the same page is in the forming stage. But it's not just working relationships, right? It's not just working relationships, it's not just not teammates, it's just not astronauts that require everyone to be on the same page to achieve their goals. Marital relationships are also a good example of this kind. Many marriages are strained or collapse because the couple cannot agree on their vision and mission on how they see their life together should look like. How to manage their finances, how to raise their children, what values are important, their vision for the kids and themselves, and yes, even religion, since religion plays a very important role in informing all of the above, whether we like it or not. Marital relationships require both persons to be on the same page. 
because a flourishing and healthy marriage is the goal. Here's another example. If your goal was to live a healthy lifestyle, would you, using a Bible term, yoke yourself with someone who does not share the same goal? Someone who would rather sleep in, eat crap, and watch YouTube all day. If you want someone to join you so that you can share the load, find encouragement, and find someone to do it with you so that you can lean on each other, you can't be yoked with a person who is not on the same page. See, that's yoking. To be able to lean on each other to achieve the same goal. When two oxen are yoked together to plow a field, that's where the whole yoking came from, they have to have the same goal, the same purpose, the same mindset, the same pace in walking to fulfill their purpose, i.e. the purpose of plowing the field. If one of those oxen doesn't do that, they don't, if one of the oxen does not have the same goal or purpose, well, buddy, You ain't plowing the field. You're going in circles. If your goal is to pursue your God-given vision, the other person must have the same pursuit, same heart, same passion to fulfill their God-given vision. If you want to run a business that is socially responsible, fair and just and Christ-centered, not profit-centered, you're not going to partner with those who don't have the same vision. In this chapter that we're going to explore, this is a story about Abraham's firm faith in God's vision for him and Isaac, the importance of his chief servant being on the same page, and the importance of ensuring that Isaac's partner is also on the same page, the same page on values, and the same page on faith. Let's begin. Starting with Genesis chapter 24, verse 1 to 4. Abraham was now old, getting on in years, and the Lord had blessed him in everything. Abraham said to his servant, the elder of his household who managed all he owned, which we will call now the CEO, place your hand under my thigh, and I will have you swear by the Lord, God of heaven and God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son, from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but will go to my land and my family to take a wife for my son Isaac. Now, quickly we know that Abraham's faith in God has been growing and maturing. How do we know that? Well, the author mentions that Abraham is getting on in years, which is a description used in the Old Testament for those who are faithful. And the Lord blessed him in everything, another Old Testament term for those who are faithful. So now, the author quickly moves our attention to the elder or chief manager of his household, i.e. a trusted individual. And like I said, from now on, we'll call him the CEO of Abraham's family operations. And by the willingness of the CEO to take a handful of Abraham's testicles and swear an oath to Abraham's Lord to fulfill Abraham's request, we are also given a quick revelation that Abraham's CEO is also on the same page as Abraham. (laughs) You need to be if you want to grab somebody's balls. We will soon learn more about the CEO later on how much he was on the same page and how his faith in God was on the same page as Abraham. Let's move on to verse 5. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land. Should I have your son go back to the land you came from? Abraham answered him, Make sure that you don't take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from my native land, who spoke to me and swore to me, I will give this land to your offspring. He will send his angel before you, and you can take a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to follow you, then you are free from this oath to me, but don't let my son go back there. So the servant placed his hand under his master Abraham's thigh and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Gosh, I hope he didn't squeeze that hard. It's interesting how the CEO is so much on the same page 
as Abraham. That he even approaches problems the same way as Abraham, right? Like Abraham, where we've gone through his whole entire journey, he was pragmatic in solving issues. The CEO also identified possible risks. Like, come on, there's a very, very high chance that whoever the CEO meets would not uproot herself, abandon her family, her friends, and home, and go with a stranger to a foreign land. Basically, the CEO is saying to Abraham that there's a high possibility that we may not find a person as faithful to do the same as Abraham did when he left Ur. He's basically telling Abraham, are you sure I can find someone that has the same radical faith like you, Abraham? But Abraham assured the CEO to remain with him and stay on the same page, to stay faithful. With all of Abraham's slip-ups in being pragmatic, remember the two lies, and not trusting in God, Abraham has learned from his lessons and told his CEO that he will be guided by the angel of the Lord. Abraham told the CEO that this whole endeavor of finding a wife for Isaac is completely in the hands of God and his providence. The CEO agreed, grabbed Abraham's tenders, and swore an oath. His faith was on the same page as Abraham's. Let's move on to verse 10. The servant took 10 of his master's camels and with all kinds of his master's goods in hand. The goods, not his inner goods. He went to Aram Naharam to Nahor's town. At evening, the time when women went out to draw water, he made the camels kneel beside a well outside the town. He prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, Make this happen for me today and show kindness to my master, Abraham. I am standing here at the spring where the daughters of the men of the town are coming out to draw water. Let the girl to whom I say, please lower your water jug so that I may drink. And who responds, drink and I'll water your camels also. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant, Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Talk about faith in the CEO. Not knowing how things will transpire, the CEO thought of an idea. And this is where we see how important it is that in order to find people who we can lean on to pursue our God-given vision, they have to be on the same page with regards to values. Because values, if you've been through this journey with us already, values inform our vision. We may have different visions, but having similar values provide the foundation for us to lean on each other. Throughout our journey with Abraham, we realize that one of Abraham's top values he holds on to with conviction was hospitality. When we read about the CEO's request to God, what do we see in his request? He's saying to God to enable him to find someone who shares and holds on to the value of hospitality as equal or even more so like his master Abraham. For Abraham displayed hospitality throughout his life. If we recall Abraham's encounter with Melchizedek. Let's move on to verse 15. Before he had finished speaking, there was Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, coming with a jug on her shoulder. She's, she's freaking strong. Now the girl was very beautiful. A virgin. No man had been intimate with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jug, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me have a little water from your jug. She replied, Drink, my lord. She quickly lowered her jug to her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels until they had enough to drink. That's a lot of water. That's where the phrase comes in with drink like a camel. Dr camels drink a lot of water. She quickly emptied her jug into the trough and hurried to the well again to draw water. She drew water for all his camels, while the man silently watched her to see whether or not the Lord had made his journey a success. Putting his faith in God 
being obedient to the oath he made with Abraham, God honored the CEO's faith. Because the CEO was obedient to the oath, honoring the values of his master by being on the same page with Abraham, trusting that God will provide and not wavering or doubting, God provided Rebecca, who not only fulfilled every single detail of the CEO's request, but she was also a very beautiful woman. Bonus! Not only is Rebecca on the same page with Abraham's value of hospitality to the nth degree, but she was also beautiful. See, this is a lesson for all of us. Our requests to God are very small compared to what God can do. This passage here reminds us that not only would God fulfill our requests to the detail through his providence, but he will do even more than what we ask or can imagine. We just need to trust and obey him and remain faithful to our God-given vision and stand firm on the values he has impressed on us. Let's move on to verse 22. As the camels finished drinking, Wow, the camels were actually finished drinking. That's a lot of water that Rebecca shoveled into their mouths. The man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel and for her wrist two bracelets weighing ten shekels of gold. Whose daughter are you? he asked. Please tell me, is there a room in your father's house for us to spend the night? Ten plus one and ten camels? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She also said to him, We have plenty of straw and feed and a place to spend the night. Then the man knelt low, worshipped the Lord, and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not withheld his kindness and faithfulness from my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The CEO's faith is in action here. If you recall, one of the ways we saw Abraham's faith in action was the building of altars and his consistent worship to God. Here, we see that this, his CEO is also on the same page. Everything that the CEO encounter or experiences, he attributes it to God and worships God, acknowledging that all things happening is due to God's kindness towards Abraham and honoring Abraham's faithfulness. So we know that Rebecca is on the same page on values. That's a given now. How about her faith? Is her faith on the same page as Abraham? Is her faith as radical as Abraham? Well, in order to know whether someone is on the same page with you, what are you supposed to do? Tuckman in his Tuckman Ladder, advises managers to make sure to explain your vision and mission and your goals and tasks clearly and in detail so that others can understand your page. Well, the CEO here does the same thing. In fact, he devotes 18 verses, I'm sorry, 19 verses in this chapter alone to rehash and lay out the details of his page, just so that Rebecca and her family understand where his page is coming from. So let's take a look at this. And it's a lengthy one, so bear with me as I read. A meal was set before the CEO, but the CEO said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say. So Laban said, please speak. I am Abraham's servant, he said. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become rich. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves and camels and donkeys and a partridge and a pear tree. Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master in her old age and he has given him everything he owns. My master put me under this oath. You will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live but will go to my father's family and to my clan to take a wife for my son. But I said to my master, suppose a woman will not come back with me. 
He said to me, The Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. And you will take a wife for my son from my clan and from my father's family. Then you will be free from my oath if you go to my family and they do not give her to you. You will be free from my oath. Today, when I came to the spring, I prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, if only you will make my journey successful. I am standing here at a spring. Let the young woman who comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jug. And who responds to me? Drink and I'll draw water for your camels. Also, let her be the woman the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished praying silently, there was Rebecca coming with her jug on her shoulder and she went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, please let me have a drink. She quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I'll water your camels also. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. All ten freaking camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She responded, The daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose. Interesting that all virgin girls have already a hole in their nose ready for a ring and the bracelets on her wrists. Then I knelt low, worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who guided me on the right way to take the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you are going to show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. If not, tell me, and I will go elsewhere. Oh, Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. We have no choice in the matter. Rebecca is here in front of you. Take her and go and let her be a wife for your master's son, just as the Lord has spoken. Now, after this long 19 verse detailed page of where the CEO is coming from, is Rebecca convinced that all the events were God's providence and that they all lined up with the CEO's request? Is she on the same page as the CEO then? Will she leave everything like Abraham did? As in, is her faith as radical as Abraham's? Because if not, then she's not the one. Her brother seems to be on the same page, but then this happened in verse 20, 52, sorry, in verse 52. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed to the ground before the Lord. But then he brought out objects of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious gifts to her brother and her mother. Then he and the men with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they got up in the morning, he said, send me to my master now. But her brother and mother said, let the girl stay with us for about 10 days and she can go. Hmm, not on the same page. But he responded to them, do not delay me since the Lord has made my journey a success. Send me away so that I may go to my master. So they said, let's call Rebecca and ask her opinion. So here's a cliffhanger. Is Rebecca on the same page with regards to faith? Is her faith the same as Abraham's? As radical as Abraham? Is she the one? In verse 58, they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? She replied, I will go. So they sent their sister Rebekah with the one who had nursed and raised her and Abraham's servant and his men. They blessed Rebekah, saying to her, Our sister, may you become thousands upon ten thousands. May your offspring possess the city gates of their enemies. Yes, Rebekah's faith is on the same page as Abraham's. She was willing to go leave her family and the familiar and go off to a foreign land, not knowing who this Isaac is, but having faith in the God who made all these things happen. See, Rebecca came from a pagan world just like Abraham. But when she saw God in action through the CEO's testimony, how the CEO prayed and how God fulfilled his request right to the detail, she like Abraham, believed, trusted God, and had a radical faith. Just like Abraham. Her radical faith blossomed in her when she heard this story. For her to be on the same page with values and on the same page with faith is so crucial for God's given vision to Abraham and humanity to be fulfilled. 
In later stories, we knew how Isaac was completely dependent on Rebekah. In fact, throughout the stories of Isaac and Rebekah, it was Rebekah who made sure that God's given vision for Isaac and Abraham remained intact. Not Isaac. It was Rebekah's radical faith and values like Abraham that pushed God's given vision for them to move forward. Isaac leaned on Rebekah and found support in Rebekah. In the last part of this chapter, we know and we read that Isaac depended on Rebekah, loved Rebekah, and found support from Rebekah to pursue God's given vision. Without her, he would have collapsed. So then, we conclude. Are those around you on the same page as you? Are your part- is your partner, business partner, co-worker, colleagues, friends, even your spouse, on the same page as you? If you desire to fulfill your God-given vision, if you desire to pursue after God's heart, if you desire to trust and obey God and live a life that continues to allow the Holy Spirit mold you to become more like Jesus, if you're a parent, if you desire to have children and raise your children as Jesus' followers, willing to obey and remain faithful in their God-given visions and answer God's call when they are called, do you have people around you on the same page as you so that you can lean on them for support, encouragement, and prayer? Will your spouse pray for you? Will, can you lean on your spouse to pray for you to pursue your God-given vision? Will your co-worker, your partner in business, pray for you to continue to pursue your God-given vision? That because they are on the same page as you, they can lean on you too as well, right? Because if they are on the same page as you, they can, you can be someone that they can lean on as well. Families depend on other families who are on the same page. Our family, my family, depend on other families to be on the same page so that we can lean on each other. We have the same visions. We want to raise our child or our children in a Christ-like manner. We want to see them grow up and be sensitive to God's calling. But how do we do that without support? And therefore, our families lean on each other. We have a lot of young families at Crucible Church right now. Young families, can you depend on each other, on each other families within Crucible Church, to lean on each other, to pray for each other, so that you can find support and encourage each other to continue to pursue your God-given vision of raising children who are sensitive to God's calling? Co-workers, colleagues, business partners as well, teammates are all, you have a vision for your business to be a socially responsible, fiscally responsible, just and fair, but also Christ-centered and not profit-centered. Do you have partners that you can lean on, who you can lean on to pursue that God-given vision? See, to conclude, Christians need each other to lean on each other as they pursue their God-given vision. We cannot depend on anyone else other than each other. Amen.